All right. Uh, check, check. Microphone is going. Okay. All right. Perfect. As much as their mentor. Yeah. No, he's their mentor. <laughs> Oof. No. No. I think he's just here to watch. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Alright. Um, we are all good. Alright, there we go. Craig in team one. Okay. Uh, that would be Mold Breakers. Zard and Kroby. Yep. I feel like we're seeing Kroby hop in the VC. The Mold Breakers. Zard will be on Yamato. Flame, Tengu, Roby will be on Turbo, Nitro, Tornado. Okay. Yep. Map for this week is CSS 06, Sky Terrace from the very first Jam Pack. And it was also the place where Catalyst Series Season 1 ended. True. So we're picking up right where we left off. Ah, I wouldn't have it any other way. I think Gibbous is yelling at me to let him speak. Oh no, that's Craig. You might see gameplay pause for a little bit. That's just because I am getting Craig's all set up. Oh my god, I can finally specify that I want a different one to join. Alright. VCs are all set up. Oh, I started finally. Oh. I'm assuming Zard knew. Yeah, I, I asked ahead of time. They they agreed. Alright. Uh so if you want my honest predictions, I'm gonna say this uh, is probably gonna go in favor of Cold Heart Stack. Uh really? mostly yeah, I think I think Pick Sticks is an amazing duelist, and I don't think that Proby and Zard have built up a lot of chemistry yet. So for them to work on two v twos, I think they're they're gonna have to focus the Kick Sticks down first and uh, try to get the kill on him, so they can how you say take out the biggest challenge, take out the biggest threat. Yeah. Certainly an alias name. Jesus, Balt service going on. Oh my god! <laughs> People are really excited for this, huh? Oh, that's gonna be interesting. I mean, uh, Abby, no. waiting on one of the players currently. I'm glad people are getting excited though. A little bit of hubbub and stream oh, chat in the server is filling up. Kind of interested to see what the first team comps are going to be from the full yeah. heart stack of the mold breakers. Uh, looking at the classes that they've brought, I can definitely see something like Turbo 
uh, Tengu being the play from Mold Breaker as well. Cold Heart stack, start with something like Commando and Sheep. If I had to uh, guess, we're com probably going to end up seeing a lot of comfort picks. Yes. I think for, for the very first match of the tournament, people are going to be more interested in, uh, how you say, uh, starting off on the right foot, starting, uh, hitting the ground running. Yeah. And trying to build up that synergy as, as quickly as possible. Just figuring out what works is going to be... Especially because these are best of ones. Yeah, there's only one map you can play on, so it's going to be difficult for, uh... Yeah. They got up to nine games, though, so... Yeah. They got to adapt quickly or they're going to fall behind real quickly. Yeah. So wait, it's going to be Mold Breakers versus Cold Heart, Cold Heart Sacks. Sacks. I can also see... We got Rambutan, Rock Block, Truffle... I'm assuming there's going to be a different match taking place instead? A lot of just messing around is happening right now while we wait for Zard. Uh, no, okay, I've got okay. chat on. What's up, Gib? I assume you want me to have 12 of you. Yeah. Oh, god damn it! Alright, oh, well... Wow. We'll have to throw out an emergency hotfix for that. Um, I guess in the meantime, just don't be cringe. For anyone who's oh. seen that happen in real time. Yeah, that's not great. Yikers. Uh, we'll have to do something about that. Alright. So, one thing I am curious about is... Obviously, this is an right. Office League tournament. We're getting a lot of... Sign-ups that we don't really... Yeah, we should fix it. We're getting a lot of sign-ups that I definitely haven't recognized before, but... You know. I've definitely seen a lot of these names in pubs before, and yeah. I definitely think that uh, a lot of these players are going to get a lot of good experience from this tournament. And that's that the they goal. can carry over the color series. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, the most important thing is to be uh, aware of is how well teams coordinate with each other and mm -hmm. how well teams can survive on their own. Because for me, I think. Uh, when you look at the past champions of both Cattle Series and CBL, you can look at a lot of players who can hold their own just fine and take on the 1v2 if necessary. Yeah. Um, Which, you know, I guess we should talk about the implications of this being 2v2 instead of 3v3. Uh, 2v2, I think it just makes the flanks a little harder and then also cuts down on the amount of damage you can pump out in a single firefight. So, yeah. this, you know, with uh, CBL, uh, sorry, Catalyst 3 Season 1, uh, you had Dark Society, you had three players who could pump out damage God. and just just dump all of that damage into one player in a matter of seconds. So 125 HP class like Commando dies in like two seconds because Hyperstorm, Wily, Darkman 1 are all dumping their Jumping damage in. onto that one. Yeah. Yeah. So contrast that with the 2v2 situation here, where uh, a lot of people are not going to be going with those high DBS classes, they're going to be more interested in playing survival classes like, say, Tengu and um, Turbo Man. You know, I guess thinking about that, opponent. another thing that I do think is really interesting is we're yeah. not going to see a lot of meta, you know? These are new players, they may not know... Like, we're not going to see hard meta comps. Yes, yeah, so we're on a new patch as well, so I think it's going to be... Mm -hmm. Uh, really interesting to see the matter that they do develop just amongst themselves. Yeah. I also think play is going to be a lot more aggressive. Oh, absolutely. Um, when you're when you're coming from pubs into more competitive settings, right? Your first, how you say, uh, your first game plan is just to run down the enemy like mm -hmm. you would in a pub match, but. I think what these two uh, teams are going to learn very quickly is that unless you win the stat check, unless you coordinate properly, you're just going to get your butt slapped uh, and kited out, yeah. and you're going to lose a lot of HP without gaining anything in return. But um, anything could happen here. I mean, this is what I like yeah. about the game, is a lot of different playstyles can be used uh, on the same map, a lot of different classes can be used on the same map, and you can see how quickly it changes the dynamic of a matchup. 
when you go from say like a uh, hyperstorm to concrete to junk to mega water to pirate on the same map yeah the thing that i really appreciate is just that the game is fresh too you know there's not one outwardly dominant strategy right so, so far, far. <laughs> ah god this is the part where I say that, uh, Rushhead, if you're watching this, uh, we gotta build the Darkman bomb and drop it on people. We're doing the, uh, Dark Society 2 again, and, uh, this time we're, we're actually sticking to the bit. Yes. Full Darkman bomb. Darkman 1, Darkman 2, Darkman 3, and Darkman 4. Uh... They bring the whole Darkman together. Yeah, um... I guess while we're kind of stalling for time. Let's talk about the map a little bit. You know, this map is an older creation. <laughs> um, it, it still holds up really well, honestly. Easily I one really... of... Hmm? Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, widely spawn, I think, is probably the most difficult part of the map to navigate. Um, you see several ladders there and jumps that make it impossible to basically have a smooth rollout from that area compared to uh, light spawn where you have an instant uh, gate to the outside, you also have instant uh, staircase to the I say wooden area and also the middle of the map. So rollouts there are going to be a lot easier yeah, yeah. and it's going to be on Wiley to figure out whether or not they want to hunker down or uh, just go all in on one side of the map to you know get, get at least a numbers advantage going yeah, and for secure sure. their part of the map. I think a key room we're going to be seeing is the waterfall room, kind of right out of the bridge and light spawn. This room just uh, gives yeah. you so many angles to hold, and I think teams that can recognize that are definitely going to have an advantage. Yes. Um, and again, this is why I also mentioned Light Tengu being the class that uh, Mold Breakers will bring to the match, because from that waterfall room, you can also basically peek into the outside area and also fly over there, or fly from the outside back to the waterfall without getting hit. Um, so that extra piece of mobility makes a huge difference in that area. I think uh, when I was Dark Society on this map, I think the plan was just um, just take advantage of Frost and Bomb and uh, Hyperstorm and take advantage of the fact that the pathways on these maps are not very wide, so if you can funnel um, enemies into these um, how you say, gates, into these uh, narrow hallways, or into the outside area, right, you have cut down on the number of fighting space, and they suddenly have less ways of avoiding, you know, the onslaught of bulky yeah. characters. For sure, for sure. There we go. There's the last there one we're waiting on. There's our boy. Just gonna check that everything's all good. We're seeing voice channels and stuff all set. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, Mendez. Yes. I'm streaming. Do you wanna reset the map with Archon? Uh, blah, 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 blah. give me a second. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Why are this Archon passes different between servers? Did you host it for the TSPG? Yeah, they Did are just auto-generated. I. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome, everyone spectated. <laughs> that server good. Shut up. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. Yeah, I think it's a good time to check the variables, game flags, all that stuff. I already double checked. Okay, perfect. When I put the servers up. Okay, Who's we're just coin flipping for spawn pick right now. Okay. Did I hear? Uh, nobody's called heads or tails yet, so. I Kirby opened up the chat. Uh, and, you know, obviously with the Novice League, we're going to have a couple hiccups. 
Oh yeah, but first like match, this. literal Tails. first All right. match. There we go. Coin flip. Okay. Ah. <laughs> keep Are they just writing out the entire Hotel Mario intro in chat? Yes. Incredible. It's awesome. Alright. Yeah. Wow. Whoa! Cold Heart stacks are actually opting for Wily Spawn? Oh, oh they're they like it rough. Oh, uh, okay. They want light. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Alright. So this is probably going to shift the dynamic of the map quite a bit. It looks like we maybe are going to see that concrete start. Concrete. Pixix doing the very smart thing of just going Mega Man to start so that they don't see his class from the beginning. But I guess Peach Bite is very confident in his concrete. You'd love to see that confidence. Well, he's one. I think he's one of the newer players who hasn't really done a lot of Prime stuff, so he might not know about the the tactic. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to mention, too, is that this is the first classes tournament that uses the ping button. So oh, now players... Oh, that is! Without mics, players that don't like speaking can now communicate with pings on where the enemy is, where the heals are, where they don't know where the enemy is, you know. Where they accidentally overextended into a 2v1. <laughs> exactly. Dude, it's, uh, it's so funny, because I do the thing where I'll get into bad situations and I will panic ping the same location like eight times. Alright, here we go. Looks like we're getting into the first game of the season. Over you already locked in on Pengu. Sard's still thinking what class he wants to drop. So again, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, Pengu's gonna be a good start. Purple from... might also be a good start for Mold Breakers. And then... Concrete and um, Pirate might be the start. Alright, looks like we are seeing Pirate Concrete and then Tornado... Tornado Yamato? Okay. The first puzzle they gotta figure out is how do they want to breach into this bridge area? Because it looks like Blue Team is just gonna want to hold this angle. Right. Yeah, it looks like yeah, Pirate is hunkering down in that area along with Concrete. Yeah. I'm thinking they're hoping oh, uh -oh. that Concrete can poke out, but... Yeah, it's going to be difficult against Tornado. Yeah. And the big scary yeah. thing about Tornado is, on these classes with well, relatively little mobility or stuff that's on, like, wind-up, is if Tornado drags you out there, you're going to be in a really scary position. Yeah, best case scenario is you get Tornado uh, to drag in one of the enemies to Zord Yamato, and then Yamato could use his spin dash to basically melt the HP of the enemy. Yeah. Which, I guess this uh, is a novice league, you know, we probably should talk about the abilities of classes we're seeing on the field. Right, so Pirate, I know, has uh, three Pirate Mines, a shield that he can activate at full uh, alt fire ammo, and then on top of that shield, he can also use his Pirate Ravager to basically rip through enemies um, nearby. Concrete, think... on the other hand. Sorry? Concrete is kind of your resident... I don't know what you'd call him. Brawler, I guess? Uh, in my opinion, he's more of a sniper. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of concrete job, yeah, is basically to get a conch shot, charge it up, and then fling it at distance uh, targets from across the map. And then if you, if there is a close uh, range fight, right, then uh, concrete has the ability to basically like shoot his uh, uh, concrete shotgun at players. Each concrete block does 10 damage each for a max of 30, and then if he's really feeling cheeky, he can actually charge up a dash that can hit the enemy for 40 damage on direct contact. And the dash can last quite a while too, so it's like also a good escape option if Concrete feels like he's getting formed. One of the big, I guess, interest cases we should talk about with Concrete in this matchup is um, his primary attack actually grounds anybody it hits. So if he hits somebody like Tornado, Tornado isn't really gonna be able to use the airspace as much in kind of that environment he'd like to. And it looks like we're seeing both of these players kind of... We're seeing them split off a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Concrete has definitely bled a lot of HP this match. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, right, I think it's going to come down to how well uh, Kick-Tick can manage the 1v2. And I know Kick-Tick is a great duelist. Um, 
just don't know if he's going to be able to carry this round on his own yeah. against Tornado and Yamato. Ooh! Oh, the beautiful snipe right there. Clean shot right there. All right, looks like we are looking at Tornado Man on the last, who seemingly hasn't actually taken any damage. The nice thing about this season, too, is it's the first season we're running with uh, Trillster's damage display, which lets us see, you know, just a bunch of, like, little interesting info tidbits, basically. Yeah, basically, damage display is what it says. It takes the uh, measurements of how much damage enemies have taken and how much uh, damage you've dealt to those enemies. So in this situation, we can see that Tornado has actually only taken 11 damage this entire round. Which I think is going to be very helpful for him if he can kill the tornado. I mean, concrete in the next firefight. So then it sets up a really nice one v one with the pirate. Yeah. Well, the big thing about pirate is tornado's got to figure out how to deal with the mines. Wow. All right, clean picking up that one elim. It looks like we are in the first one v one of the series here. So I did mention that Kick Six is an amazing duelist, and I stand by that statement. I mm -hmm. do think he has the advantage here, especially with the thirty percent armor saving shield. So yeah. anything that would normally do 10 damage to him actually ends up doing 7 damage. And I think and that's, that's going to make the difference in this duel. Especially on a class like Tornado, who has such a low damage output, really. Proby's really going to have to play the patient game here. Yeah, just take it slow, uh, pick his shots, and pick them well so that uh, he can win the trade without, uh, I say, giving up any health in return. True, Tornado is capable of patient play, but I just... He's got... The deck... The... God. The deck is stacked against him a little bit, what with the redirecting projectiles that Pirate Man has, and kind of just the ability to play generally safe. Yeah, so this is the thing too, is the effective range of each class is completely different, so you see Pirate trying to close the gap against Tornado because he realizes that his mines actually lose speed as they travel further. Where tornadoes, um, how you say, tornado blows can basically travel the same speed over a long distance, and so yeah. it's easier for tornado to chip out from across the map compared to pirate. Uh, they do not lose speed as they travel. Oh, they stop. Okay. I could have sworn they did because they don't travel very far in the first place. They have limited range. Is the big ah, thing. Ah, that's, that's they that. just okay. stop limited traveling range. after a certain range. Gotcha. Yeah, I think. It really could go either way, honestly. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be fun hey, now. Does. Yep. Do you want to run the gas timer command for me, quick? And tell me what that number says. Uh, okay, so CBM underscore LMS gas underscore time. It says 600 right now. That should be 900. I told you to check the variable. I, oh my I thought God. I double checked. I thought I double checked. That's my bad. <sighs> uh, now, to be fair, this is the first time. Also, the first tournament that we're um, implementing the gas into. Oh my um, God. I guess we should probably mm -hmm. talk about what that means. Yeah, I'll let you talk about it. So. This was a big thing that I had kind of fought for for a while, but basically you're going to see that timer in the top middle of your screen, and when that hits zero, a poisonous gas is going to start encroaching on the map, and players are going to have to find where it stops spawning and battle for that location. And it's basically just meant to stop games from going on forever. Yeah, the hey storm kids, from Fortnite, you basically. Fortnite? Exactly! It's this the like storm. your favorite game! Now you can do the default dance over your enemy's corpse! Yeah. You know what? Gibbous actually brings up a valid point. If you're looking at the total damage Kroby has taken compared to the damage Kicksticks has taken here, uh, you know, he's definitely been playing way more patiently, and it's it's showing. Yes. Really patient play. Kicksticks just not able to find the angle uh, to make a good approach here. Yeah. Um, and, and you can tell it's mainly just because um, Kicksticks is basically restricting himself to just the outside area of the map, which is in itself doesn't give him a lot of, uh, how you say, good sight lines mm -hmm. compared to where Kobe's at right now. He's in the waterfall room. Am I, am I ghosting by doing this? I'm like, I shouldn't be no. ghosting, I'm sorry. Okay. If they're listening to the stream, that is absolutely a bannable offense, so... Okay. And, and they're moving around frequently as well, so anything yeah. I say right now is, is, is going to be irrelevant after, like, 10 seconds. Yeah, 5, 10 seconds. Yeah. Again, you see... Yeah. Uh, Kobe's and... doing a really good job hiding out the Pirate Man. 
listening for where the pirate could be, listening for where those mines could be, and then just getting away from that as quickly as possible. Oh, but pirate closing the gap. Pirate's closing oh, the gap. Oh, here we go. This is where it gets dangerous because pirate just outputs super scary amounts of damage. Oh, terrible thing for Tornado there was that he actually um, used the Tornado Blow at a wrong time, basically drew the pirate into him as pirate was activating his Ravager, and that just ripped him for almost, almost half of his health in that yeah. one encounter. Taking about 36 from that exchange, leaving him at about 25. What we're looking at is Pirate is also kind of hovering around that 20 mark, taking a little bit more damage. At the end of his life here, he's going to have to clutch this out quick and get maybe one or two good shots in, otherwise it's over for that first round. And at that point, you start asking yourself whether or not it's the Pirate that uh, needs to be swapped out, or if Concrete needs to be swapped out, because Concrete did die first, didn't get a whole lot of damage in. Concrete um, did pick up that kill on the Yamato, though, I think. Yeah, good snipe there. Yeah. But they gotta have an answer for the tornado, otherwise this is just gonna happen the next round. Ooh, there we go. Ooh. Picks up that clean exchange. Able to come back from that 2v1. Very well played from Kroby. Now it's also worth mentioning too that Kroby isn't a completely new player. He's he's had years he's of experience been playing with the tornado for years. Yeah. Yeah. The Speaking This season is kind of a filter he has season. A nutty tornado. Yeah. One of the stipulations of the rule set for the novice league is you can't have participated in any prior leagues before you play. And, you know, so this first season... Are we seeing Neptune from Kroby? We are seeing we Neptune from Neptune. Oh, uh, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, you got a spec. Yeah. It's, like, it, it's out it, of his class. Damn. Class. You hate to see yeah. it. Super Rip. unfortunate. I think... Yeah, this is another important thing, is um, you want to set up your class binds before the match, so that you don't accidentally switch the wrong class, yeah, in an instant. Uh, Zard here is going to be playing the 1v2, unless he wants to spectate as well, and just forfeit the round. Right, Jesus, play the server's out? almost full. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to... Check the server variable for Max Connect while this happens. Yeah. Alright, looks like we're just gonna see that one round go away quick. We're looking at a 1 1 scoreline for both teams here. And it looks like we did see a swap from Yamato to Flame, who is much less of an offense focus and kind of specializes in locking down corridors with his M2. It's a big carpet of fire that just does damage to anyone who walks in front of it. Alright. Uh, so I did boost the max client to 48 so that more people can join if they want to watch. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Looks like we're seeing Playing a tornado. Six of tornado. Concrete's moving out pretty offensively here. Maybe coming back to his teammate a little bit. Uh, that's good though. They're closing down the map and they're giving Pirate a better chance at basically using his Ravager and his mind up yeah. against Tornado and Flame. Oh, Pirate's coming from Pirate. behind actually. Pirate. There's a a little bit of a scuffle going on. Uh-oh, Pirate's in trouble. Oh. Here comes Concrete. Maybe we're going to see... Seeing some pretty oh, major exchanges there. Picksticks taking, you know, maybe 40 on that exchange. Ooh, tornado kicks, though. Those do also do a lot of damage. Kobe, they are just running circles around this Concrete right now. Yeah. And I think maybe they were just looking for something that could kite a little bit more effectively. But the Flame Blast is doing work as well. It's, it's kind of pushing away the Concrete and Pirate Ooh. moving closer. Ooh. Clean meat shot. Kroby able to get out of there with his mobility, but that put him in a pretty dangerous position. He's got to be under a half health at that point. Down goes the Conk. Alright. Both Flame and Tornado doing a good job collapsing on the Pirate. There is that small window where Pirate doesn't have any mines oh. and needs to reload. Yeah, that reload opportunity is... Yeah, here we go. I think that's going to be game two. Ooh! Oh! Clean pick oh, up on the remote mines. Clean. Now it's just... Now it's just fighting that flame man. I think Kick Six has the advantage here for sure. Maybe not in terms... Actually, yeah, Kick Six definitely has the advantage. If you look at both of the health values for these guys, they're sitting at the same range. Looking at maybe they're, some... They're both really low. So, yeah. I mean, again, if... if um. 
Zard gets a really good flame blast uh, around the corner, then you can catch Kickstick by surprise and basically win him the round. It's just a matter of who corner checks who. But that's kind exactly. of his win con, though, is fishing for maybe a lucky corner check. Yeah, and you can see he's kind of... Using the gravity on those lob shots is actually pretty smart to get a little bit of, you know, just maybe pressure going on. Ooh, here co Okay, we're seeing a little bit of an engagement here. Oh, this is it. Oh. Last right of the round. For sure. Oh. Wow. Both dodged really well, okay. Yeah. I see an absolute field of mines there. Six Six may be trying to readjust a little bit. Ooh! <laughs> catches him with the flame burst! unfortunate for him. Yeah. But I respect him going for broke. Um, at, at that point, if you kill the enemies low and you can kill them with one Ravager, yeah, I, I would definitely do you the just same go for it. Situation. Yeah. Alright. Moldbreaker is up two. Fight. Seeing same comp all around, not seeing any changes. Which, I mean, that's fair. I think it worked pretty well. Just seeing a little bit more of that the... neutral game. Yeah, maybe Frostbite needs a couple more rounds to warm up on concrete. Yeah. But I think oh, once he's locked in, he'll start... Something might be going on here. A little bit of an engagement with the flame. Ooh, there's that concrete debuff. You can see the gray, the gray particles under that flame man's feet. He would not be able to jump over anything that came his way. With another shot. Doesn't quite Ooh, get it. Oh, that's bad. That's far. rough. That is bad. Concrete taking so much damage. Yeah, oh, this might be... Extended there. My goodness. We are starting to see a little bit of that... Um, Kroby's Tornado, I think, is really starting to come online for this game. Yeah, it's simple overextension there. Yeah. And, I mean, just Zard's damage, too, is insane. 425 and three games is nuts. Ooh, good flank. You know, just... Well, Kick Sticks is in a really tough situation here, because numbers mean so much. Yep, okay, here we go. Here comes that dangerous... Just... Ooh, there we go. Alright. Going up three games, two more, and Moldbreakers can actually secure themselves a victory. Looks like we might be seeing a swap here. From Concrete to Chill Man. I think that extra speed and mobility is going to be important for them. Yeah. And just, you know, I think the floor coverage might have a little bit of a swing. Also, the fact you can just fly over the um, flame burst as they spawn. I think it's going to be pretty important. Uh, sheep. Okay. Okay. Uh, Seeing a little bit of it starting... What happened? Oh, he picked the wrong class again. Kroby, please. <laughs> uh, He's giving up another round, you know, just, you know. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Prepare to fight. Kroby doesn't mind. It's twice now. <laughs> you know what? In in Wily's defense, the only team, the only times Light has won is when they've dropped games because of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can't even get an accurate track on Kroby's stats this game because he's been spectating. Three, two, one, I mean, not good. we could go through with like the demo and stuff. Yeah, I'm recording the demo right now, so I'll have yeah. it for later. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it looks like a Sheep Pirate for Light Team, Flame Tornado for Wily. Yeah, I think Flame Tornado is just a comp that works really well. Sheepman is definitely an interesting class. I'm not, uh, I'm not too privy on his major game plans or functions, but you're I gonna see again, him. Go ahead. Sorry. I think that the game plan for Wild right now is to bunker on the outside area and to use uh, sheep, outfire, and pirate mines to basically poke out the enemy without sharing the same sight line. Yeah. Um, basically doing what Wily team is doing, but hopefully a bit better. Yeah. You're going to see him throwing out those clouds from time to time. He can remotely detonate those whenever he wants. 
and the little bolters he fires from his big hands, or his main fire, is just... You know, they apply light hit stun, meaning he can kind of stuff approaches a little bit. But yeah, it seems like they're sort of sticking to that strategy of just holding the bridge room. Oh, see the Zard ping. Yeah, both player players are kind of jockeying for position of that bridge room, is what I've been noticing. Ooh, big pirate mine from Kick Six onto the Flame Man. Yeah, yeah Kick Six is trying to create his own advantages here. Which I mean, you know, you kind of you have to do what you have to do. Looks like we might be seeing Sheet Man engage with Tornado over at the bridge. Oh my God! Finds the kill with the reload. Really smart kill right there. Yeah. New Flame Man couldn't do anything about it. Flame Man couldn't get away in time, and now it's a two v one again with Kroby on Tornado. He's done Can this he before. Pull another clutch. Any plus again. Mm. Actually, I guess the big difference maker here is Sheep has access to really just projectiles. Like, fast, constant streams of projectiles that he's going to have to dance around really effectively. Mm, but I'm looking at Sheep's remaining health here, and I think one good tap from Grenado might take him out. Here I we go, think... here's the engage. Oh, yep, here we go. Oh my god, alright, finds the Sheep Man. All right, are we gonna see another Kroby clutch? Uh, Kroby's gotta be super low after that last engage. One tap, yeah. Has to be. Especially against a class like Pirate who can shit out damage. Kroby sitting at a cool four HP to kick sticks is like 30. One Pirate mine is all it's gonna take here. But Tornado does seem to have that movement to be able to dance around some of those mines. Yeah, he's just he's able to juke out a lot of those pirate mines. Ooh, that was close. Katie is right, it is first yeah. to five rounds, not first to five, sorry. But still, yeah. Light team can win this one. They can put themselves in a good position. Yeah, even up the series, or if Wiley wins this, then that puts him on game point. Yeah. And I guess one of the major rule sets we are seeing change from Catalyst before is all games up until playoffs. F wow. Four health. All right. Wily team sitting now on set point of the first game in the season. Are we going to see a switch? I don't see anybody going into console right now. Oh, Frostbite going into console. Kix is going into console. Oh, are we, oh. we might see a double switch. I mean, you kind of you kind of just have to throw it at the wall this round. You know, your previous strategy hasn't been working. We are seeing Mega Waters. Mega Waters sheep. I think Mega Waters is going to be a lot smarter of a pick because he's able to kind of harangue Tornado from more of a range. Yeah, I think um, it's going to be a lot easier for Mega Water S to poke from uh, range compared to Pirate, and I think that's what he wants at this point, just that extra range while still keeping all a hold of the shield, giving yeah. that extra durability. He does lose some of the bolt compared to Pirate Man, though. Yeah. He does gain a little bit of uh, extra mobility, though, as well. Yeah, the, the main um, thing you're going to be seeing him looking for is a lot of those water geysers. Yeah, he can just use those for quick elevations up to high ground or just to poke enemies out from afar. And you can see already, this has definitely slowed the pace of the game quite a bit. Players are trying to figure out how to approach this new situation. Zard's yeah. still playing pretty aggressively. If we look at some numbers, he's taken about 30, which is lots more than anyone else on the field right now. Yeah, but when it, all it takes is one good flame burst to tighten the tide of a battle here. But yeah, one good engage. You know, we're seeing that tornado take a lot of damage. Kick six himself only trading about seven health for it. That was this a might this might be the turnaround actually. point. Uh, every flame burst that spawned there brought Zard down to really low, less than half HP at this point. Yeah, Zard's sitting at about 
30%. Kroby's sitting at about half. Frostbite's at about half, but Kickstix is in a really good position right now. Oh, might be seeing the dunk there. Dunks are gonna... Do Tornado Dunks do extra damage? Remind me. Yes, okay. So you're gonna see when Sheepman is in the air using his reload, which is that large storm of clouds, Tornado Man's gonna be shooting at the ceiling to try and dunk him into the ground for bonus damage. And yeah, okay, yep, we're seeing what I maybe started talking about a little bit here. SKV, or not SKV, um, Mold Breakers is kind of holding that waterfall room just because of the advantages in terms of sight lines it gives them. And maybe looking at a bit of an overview, seeing both teams kind of hovering around in that middle area, just trying to poke each other out. We are going to see that shield bang. activated. Red rolling out to the bridge, maybe opting to. Ooh. Oh! Fix it. Nice you are a brave man. Going for some pit protect sillies. All right, oh. there we go. Finding that tornado kill. This, they're in a really good position right now. Zard does not have a lot to work with here. Zard is one tap and. All it takes is one straight projectile. Yeah. One straight anything, honestly. That is true. The dodge. The MWS is not gonna go for a shield kill, is he? Hmm. He'd be funny if he did. Would you do it with your tournament life on the line? Uh, I mean, if I know my opponent was one tap, yes. 100%. Oh, there we go. All right. Looking at a four-three. Scoreline here. No game point for Wiley. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's gone to the console yet, so I think we'll see the same classes for next round. Three, two, one, yep, same classes. Deep Mega Water for yep. Light, Flame I mean, Tornado for Wily. If oh, it what's works. The next game tonight? Uh, next game tonight is at 8 p.m. Central. I will not be here for it though. Okay, 9 p.m. EST. Yep. I don't know if I'll be available to watch it or not. Here's hoping. Yeah, I got Gibbous officiating and getting recording. Is he commentating? Oh wait, it won't matter. <laughs> You're the one who has the stream. Ooh, here we go. Maybe seeing... Alright. Not seeing much of a Flame Man engage. Yeah, Tornado seems to yeah. be playing, playing a little bit further back than previous rounds. God damn it. Yeah, I told you the spectator settings! There we go. Spectator ah. set is now off. There we go. It's set to there three in the pre... Oh. It is set to three in the practice config for a good reason. Oh my god, wait, yeah. hold on. Oh god, things are happening. Seeing a little bit of an engage oh. onto that Mega Waters. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh my god, finds a kill with that reload. And the shawarma over. Wait, no, it doesn't find anything with the reload. Frostbite, I mean. Yeah, it's just Sheep Man on his own. Can the new guy clutch this out against two, you know... Much more seasoned players. Yeah. Oh, mm, no, he... Not able to find anything. Hooked from afar. And that will be game one. I'm gonna hop into the post-game lobby, as I do. Huh. Why? Oh, I gotta end this space, don't I? Let's connect quietly. All right, there we go. That'll be game one, fellas. How are we feeling? I am under the stage. No, oh, Gibbous needs to be. I can't mm. move him there. Wait, what? Why am I still on the stage? What? You have to disconnect. Push the talk. 
hurt myself. Why is push to talk on? That's stupid, honest. Yeah, I know it's stupid. Give me a second. Where's Gibba? Obliterate oh, there he is. You. Obliterate you. Obliterate you. Yeah. There we go. Fixed. My bad. My bad, y'all. Yes. Oh, hola chicos, ¿cómo están? Mi nombre es Ar. Alright. Do I need? Mi nombre es Ar, amigo, es Kick Sticks. Oh, hi, Zar. Now, what is this guy on? Hicimos Brendan. Hicimos Brendan. Alright, <laughs> how are we feeling twice. about game one, fellas? I saw the tail end this. I don't know. I want to go home. <laughs> game six. I want to go home. <laughs> I hate this, I experience. want to go home. Alright. I was, I was not, ex I was not expecting... Home. Like, yeah. I was expecting this to be a really close match, honestly, because both, uh, both kicks I mean, it was pretty close. Right? Let the man talk. Let my yeah. man start talk. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. did you use the Oppenheimer strategy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Care to elaborate? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you said two and win. Yeah, I mean yeah, that the is clear Oppen... the clear Oppenheimer strat is actually to use heat, man. True. Yeah, I mean Honestly, that's game one of the season. Next one is in a couple of hours, you know. Yeah. I will. Wait, what's the next one again? Uh, that would be Smoke and Sexy Style versus Comb Unit. Combat Unit. The, re right. the real one v one between Spectre and Trill because that is going just to get picked off. I, is it, is I got to be honest. Play. Is it like no, not even is, not, is not it, even beat off. He's just gonna like wander around and die. The yeah, epic is, fight between Specter and yeah, Joe. I, I kind of just felt like I was yeah. dead weight for the most epic of the fight between Joe that and really Specter. Oh, it, it's hey. it's fine. it is what it is, man. It was your first you tournament game. Yeah, yeah. You have got more opportunities. Shipman more than I do right now because I'm pretty hate Shipman. I'm also yeah. pretty impressed with that sheep man play. play yeah, actually. the sheep was actually pretty good. good reload. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, yeah, I, feel like, I, feel like, I, feel like I was just in a lot of situations with concrete where I'm like, I need to swap oh. concrete because it, there was just nothing I could have done. Yeah, it's just yeah. 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 corner. One and like, important. Oh, I don't God. have a way to fight that. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just the nature of the matchup too. Yeah, yeah, but the nature of the me thing was the thing was that we went to shoot. Yeah. We're going to check here, and he got the poke, right? Then I told Crowley to check here, and we didn't get poke. Is it that? Oh, shit. Did anyone <laughs> get a screenshot of the final score? It was 5-3, right? 5-3, yeah. Uh, it was 5-4, yep. actually. It was 5-4, I think. 5-4? No, 5-3. No, no, I'm pretty sure it was 5-4, really right? No, it was 5-3, yeah. Five, yeah. Five, three, yeah. Five, I'll update five, the bracket three. after I watch my the bad. stream. We'll be fine. Yeah. All right, well, me, that's... Me stupid, I'm sorry. That's kind of all I've got for this first game. Mm -hmm. You know, VOD should be automatically saved on my YouTube. You can just go check the live page. Well played, everybody. Uh, will, will you, will you yeah, have well, a playlist of well all of these VODs or something? Well yeah, I'll, I'll throw well them in a playlist at the end. Tornado yeah. Man. Yeah, please Honestly, do. Tornado so, Man terrified me. Me and, well, me and yeah, the, Tornado uh, is a very he's a very hard class to figure out. He's, yeah. I'm kind of scared for both of like, Tornado. All right. The, all of the classes, Tornado and uh, Nitro, were Nitro. I have yeah. both. <laughs> We're like the Nitro two wasn't threats. even played. Nitro, yeah. Yeah, Nitro wasn't, wasn't even touched. Well it played, gentlemen. Tornado. I gotta I get mean, dashing. Honestly, see, I need. Alright, we also have a. I mean, we also honestly, have a crib.